All right. Uh, greetings, YouTube. This is the Garage Autonomist. Today, I know that a lot of you all didn't know that uh, I was going to do this hangout. Normally, I put out uh, an announcement earlier in the week, but I got jammed up with things and I wasn't able to get early uh, to this brother early enough uh, to let him know whether or not we could do this tonight. Uh, now, I only have him for about 30 minutes, but with the questions that I have, we'll probably even be done uh, earlier than that. I am honored to have tonight uh, the Afro Syndicalist. Uh, and tonight we're going to be talking about, this is going to be part two of the interview because I'm um, going to have him on later as he uh, does uh, have a limited schedule tonight. So uh, first question. Now, for, first thing I wanted to get into is that Afro Syndicalist is a, a new YouTuber or newer YouTuber anyway. Uh, uh, I will be putting the link to his channel in the low bar when we're done. Uh, he is obviously black radical or a black leftist. And before I get into labeling him, I'd rather for him to label himself. So uh, my first question to you, brother, how are you doing? I'm doing very, very good. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Second question is, let's start with your dope ass name that I'm mad at myself for not thinking of it first. Tell us why you name yourself the Afro Syndicalist. Well, uh, you know, I'm very Afrocentric and uh, I'm part of the libertarian left. I believe in syndicalism and most importantly, syndicalism as a means to achieve communism. And so I just smashed both of them together and came up with the name. Excellent. Excellent. Um, now, the next thing I want to know is, uh, could you just give us, if you're able to do it uh, briefly or maybe not so briefly, but just let everybody know, what is a syndicalist? Uh, you know, at its core, it's mostly just about labor unions and, you know, horizontal labor unions taking control of the means of production, basically. Right. So, in other words... When we hear a lot of Marx just talking about, or when we read Marx in general, uh, talking about workers uh, taking the means of production, what we really, what 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 we really are to understand is that there is a democratic tendency of among the workers to be able to take over the workplace, so to speak, and to organize. Yes. Yes. Okay. And see, that's kind of the reason why I never got into Leninism. Because I always thought that, you know, the horizontal means of organizing, you know, production just seems, it, it just seems too similar to capitalism. I mean, I don't want to offend any Leninists, but that's just my personal opinion. Right. Now, um, just to make everything, just to make it clear to everyone, now Lenin's idea was uh well at least if you could tell us the similarities between what lenin wants to do and close to capitalism w was exactly what in terms of a hierarchy yeah mostly just the hierarchy right i mean i'm not saying that lenin like lenin's uh proletarian dictatorship were was the same as capitalism i mean it's much better than capitalism but I'm just saying it, it. It's mostly just uh, putting power in the hands of a few individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. basically, what we're talking about here is, because uh, like, okay, how about this? We know that traditionally, yeah. when we think of trade unions, we know that there's a uh, shop boss, so to speak. We know that there are people who have certain rankings within the union. We know that um, the dealings are often with the bosses of, or rather the actual capitalists. And so we know that in most trade unions, they uh, one would might even say they've been co-opted. Yeah. Right. Under capitalism, of course. Yeah. But if we look back and, on, uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. But if we look back in Russian history in terms of the Russian Revolution and how that went, we knew that there were workers who were already 
mainly thrust mainly uh, this was uh, thrusted by the anarchists was they were already looking to organize based on a full on horizontal demo you know democratic uh, means in other words they were voting there wasn't a uh, certain uh, steering committee there wasn't the the uh, the hierarchy which is ultimately is what lenin created or set forth which is a bolsh you know with the bolshevik party um which he wanted to replicate in general and basically have that organizing the workers in the workplace uh and in a lot of ways and as as we know noam chomsky talks about this Len lenin if anything usurped what was happening or undermined what was already happening in the workplace mm -hmm. right okay and uh <clears throat> see i'm not the one of an expert on russian revolution but i do uh i do agree with noam chomsky's perspective you know right. it's like he I don't want to put so much blame on Lenin because I do see why he did some of the things he did. You know, Soviet Union was being invaded. Well, I call it invading. Most people on the left call it invading. Most of the West call it intervention. But yeah, virtually speaking, Russia was being invaded by the West. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm not going to lie. The horizontal means organizing, when it comes to warfare, I, I do agree that centralized government works best under you know war warlike conditions. But what Lenin did, you know, in my opinion, he kind of took it a little bit a little bit further. He purposely destroyed any chance of true socialism from happening in the uh, in the USSR. Mm. Mostly just due to uh I mean, I don't want to say he was power hungry, but he, there were some selfish desires in that, you know, destruction. Hmm. Well, right. I want to circle back just a little bit because I know that we kind of went off into um, talking about the, the, the definition of syndicalism. And of course, that led to what basically is the difference between that and say uh, communism is both the West had co-opted and teaches us and and what even a lot of Marxist Leninists uh, want to teach. Uh, but I just want to circle back um, and, and, and focus back on you. So far, I've seen your channel cover a range of topics such as mental health, electoral politics, and we'll get to those topics uh, probably in our part two, but, uh, but you give us, but could you give us an insight to your own political growth? Malcolm X and Asada Shakur, Fred Hampton, would typically be seen as children of the hood, and they evolved to be the most homegrown revolutionary thinkers, uh, as well as other countless people. Uh, so how did you come to your political consciousness? Yeah, that's an extremely long story. but uh... Well, we could break it up into two parts, but yeah, I'd rather hear it. Yeah, I can probably summarize it. Uh, I would say, well, I became political about three years ago. I started off, I started off as a liberal, or Hillary Clinton, you know, all that. Yeah, uh, haven't we all? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and my mom kind of politicized me. You know, she, uh, she was very for Hillary Clinton. And so I got more into politics, you know, what Hillary Clinton was about. Uh, I started looking at the news, I started looking at debates, etc. And then, uh, you know, Donald Trump run the election, you know. And that's kind of how a lot of people got more theater to the left because they saw how, you know, Donald Trump won, you know, this reactionary force, and etc. And then I started reading up on, well, for, yeah, yeah, I, I would say I started reading, you know, the basics, you know, like, uh, uh, I'm not, well, I read a summary of Das Capital, but I'm currently on the third volume of Das Capital. And also, I'm in a contract that's so, you know, uh, then, 
Uh, oh, oh, sorry, you were breaking up a little bit. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, and then as I call myself a Marxist, while well, actually understand what it was, so I tried to build deeper. And then uh, it's came across anarchism and cynicalism, and uh, I don't, I don't know. I just started to steer toward that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that you know uh, grandiose, but well, that's fine. I mean, that to see to, to me, I feel like. Um... You know, people can write all the. Hello? The the journalism, there is, but ultimately, I feel like you really learn politics more based on people's belief and like how they got from A to B. Uh, I mean, it, it's that way for me, and, and it was that way for me anyway. Uh, have you been involved politically in your community at all? or You know, I live in a pretty reactionary part of the uh, well, part of the United States. So, I mean, I have tried to you know, spread more radical politics, but I, I've been hitting brick walls after brick walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, i uh, so I think it was about a year ago. I started thinking I have to start small. So I started volunteering at different places. I started trying to start community gardens, trying to start uh, basically trying to start what do you call them? Book, yeah, book, <laughs> sorry, book clubs. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I have uh, tried to cover the current election. I tried to go to town meetings, but they don't get any. They don't get anything done there anyway. So. Right, right. Now, um, what I'm hearing is sounds pretty key to me. See, I think that anything is, is quote unquote, I don't want to even call it small, but anything that's quote unquote small or what people consider, um, you know, just, just, just community organizing, you know, is to me the, 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 <laughs> the seed that can grow into something else. So I feel like if you're talking about community gardens, uh, definitely, you know, that's a good thing. You're networking with the community. If you're networking with the community, you're talking to people in your community. If you're talking to people in your community, then you start having conversations about everything else, social stuff, politics, culture, whatever. So I think that's good. I think that you are hitting on other things like book, you know, book, book clubs and stuff like that. Like one of the reasons why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be done making videos in January is because I've, you know, one of the things I want to do is to go in, back into that kind of work. Now, I lived in Houston, Texas for a huge chunk of the earlier part of my life and my political life. So I, I totally get where you're going about the whole being in a reactionary place and, you know, brick walls and how do you start and all that. And that's probably where I want to go, even though I'm in Harlem. Believe me, I, 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 I the way I see it, I think that the... Um, you, you, I think that the, the 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 journey or the drive is pretty much the same. You know, it's, it's going to be at the same acceleration. Like, you know, there could be brick walls up here as well. You know, and there are. So I, I don't know. I think that um, I think that you you brought up some really good stuff there. Yeah. Ugh, sorry, my voice is a my voice slurs every time I get thirsty. That's all right. So, um, let's see here. here. Uh, let's see. So, <clears throat> now, you know, bringing up, speaking of reaction or reactionary elements, so here's the thing. And again, this may blow up into a larger discussion. And again, I know, you know, when you have to go, 
you have to go. And then we'll come back and uh, do a uh, do a part two to this discussion. But in the black community, as we know right now, you know, we have either uh, black folks who vote Democrat. So I guess you would label them as black liberals. You got the sliver of black conservatives. Then you have your other sliver of black nationalists who are, you know, <laughs> and then you've got everyone else, right? Uh, who are either who think or would consider themselves apolitical, but I don't believe there's any such thing as someone being apolitical. They may be apathetic, but deep down, everyone is political. They they know that if you have to get, if you make a paycheck, if you have to work for a paycheck, I can guarantee you thoughts and things come to your mind in terms of how you're living, why things are certain. Are, certain things are happening to you uh you know you're gonna be pol you know you're political no matter what yeah do you see is there a nest you know just just gonna throw this uh this rhetorical question out here is there a nest uh, uh, an, uh is it necessary to build a black left tendency in the black community oh yeah it's, it's completely necessary Mostly because of, well, basically just, what do you call it? I keep forgetting words for some reason. But, uh, and yeah, the tradition of the left has mostly just been, you know, organizing around. I want to make this sound better. But the lowest of, a, you know, capitalist society, and that's where most Black people are. You know, most Black people all love the proletariat. We exist on the, on the margins of a uh, well, global capitalism, and uh, with that being said, you would think that the left would be much much stronger in the black community, but at the same time, you would just be completely wrong. And it's really the black community that needs the left, and the left needs the black community. You know, we have this uh, like Marx said, the umbilical cord that links man with man. And the group, of course, the links groups with other groups. And that's what we have, and that's what we... I'm wording this wrong, but... Basically, the left needs Black people, and Black people can benefit greatly from left-wing ideologies. Okay, okay. Now, um... How would we, and this is of course the bigger question, how would how do you think where where do you where would we start? That seems to be the most frustrating question that a lot of people might have in their minds. Like when I look at the 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 handful, the small, very small handful of black leftists on YouTube right now, and they're they're tiny, right? It's obvious that we exist, but the thing is, is that in real life, off of YouTube, I'm pretty sure there has been that frustrating question of what what can be done. How, I mean, you know, in other words, you know what you where you stand politically and ideologically, but then you've got this whole other, you've got this whole community, and you know that, as you just put it, the left needs black people black people need the left how you know just in your wildest ideas or even the most practical one where do you think we should start there's no wrong right or wrong answer here oh yeah you're completely right uh well for me I, i've had the most success at organizing at well, basic needs. You know, a lot of people don't have access to clean water or food, which you think would be a problem. Well, what most uh, most people in the West will will think will be a problem for an industrialized nation, but in reality, a lot of people, especially in the South, don't have access to clean water or healthy food. And uh, if we can get like you know, those ground issues and organize around them greatly and kind of mm, yeah, kind of make that one of our core 
Hey, I keep getting word for some reason. A core, a core, uh, yeah, core issues. Then I think we'll, we will have a lot of success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like that. I like that. I mean, I like that answer. Even though I just said there's no wrong, right or wrong answer, but um, because what that brings to to my mind, right? I had the, I had the, um, the 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 honor or the pleasure rather of working with and meeting uh, Lorenzo Camboa Irvin back in the nineties. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll talk to you offline about that, but so and just for everybody who's listening, Lorenzo Camboa Irvin, and you can even look him up on YouTube. He doesn't have a channel, but he um he's a former black panther he was a political prisoner uh there was a movement to get him out he was he got out and since then he's been doing work in the community uh what he started was uh the the, the idea of black autonomy now i'm gonna put a link in the low bar it's just a very basic video sort of like a 101 for anybody out there who wants to know what black autonomy is or what black autonomism is. And um, and as I'm pretty sure uh, Brother uh, Afro Syndicalist knows, it's basically a form of black anarchism or just a form of black left or left communism. And the idea from Lorenzo's perspective though was exactly what you just talked about. Starting with the work of basic needs, not trying to do this sort of vanguard party you know hitting people with these big theoretical words and 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 all this shit that alienates people but trying to gauge in the black community what is needed and then from there building and sort of politicizing as you go with the people so that's kind of like so that's basically what i'm hearing from you is that do i have that right oh yeah exactly Right. So you saying that and I'm looking at your videos, you, you, you did an excellent video about food uh, and you were talking about basically growing it, something that I covered like a year and a half ago. But still, it's, it's, it's something that definitely needs to be talked about. And I actually love the fact that, you know, you took your camera, you showed that you were growing uh, food. I don't know if that was your backyard, or if that was your community garden, but. The fact that the idea of the community doing something on their own autonomously in order to be uh, independent, uh, but even a project like that is enough to sort of get to know people, networking with people, and politicizing them. It's a great opportunity. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out as an example. I thought that was a great video, by the way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we've got, I'm going to go ahead and um, we, you and I will go ahead and set up on a second talk because I don't want to get too far into it because I know that you, you know, your, your time is limited tonight and uh, there's a lot more things that I definitely want to get, uh, talk about. So uh, will you be willing to come, are you willing to come back another night? Okay, excellent. So what we're going to do is, guys, I'm going to end this talk, and then I'm going to come back online uh, in about maybe five or ten minutes, and I'm just going to do an open mic hangout with everyone else if, if, you're, all, if you're all willing. And I want to thank Afro Syndicalist. This is part two of, our, of our, my discussion with him uh, towards a black autonomy in the black community, and we're going to be talking about when he comes uh, back, probably later this week, we're going to be talking a little bit more in detail about um, his city uh, in the South and talk about a little bit more about some of his videos. So uh, thank you very much for coming and uh, for talk for speaking with us tonight. Hey, you're welcome. I'm, I'm happy to come back. I mean, I love these videos. I love the community. I mean. Like, I was actually excited when you told me to do an interview. So. Yeah, and I was excited to see your channel, man. Like, seriously. So, um, 
Uh, yeah, this is this is great. This has been a really good discussion, and I can't wait for us to go ahead and talk again. So uh, what I'll do is I'll definitely email you. And um, now that, you know, we definitely I sent you a link and all that so you can get on here tonight. So we know the emails are working. So I'm going to email you and we'll set up a, a time later on this week. And if you need to do it earlier, just let me know. OK, so. All right, everybody, I will see you all in about another five minutes or so. I'm going to shut this discussion down and I'm going to come back on to do an open mic. Peace. This is the Garage Autonomous. Thank you, Afro Syndicalist. You're welcome.